After my aluminum mold face shield video, I had a few folks email me privately and ask if I could machine them some molds so that they could do the same thing for their city. I was running low in aluminum of the right dimensions, but I did have some sheets of HDPE, high density polyethylene, which also makes a really nice mold material. It's naturally pretty non-stick, it's plastic so it machines super easily, and it's also pretty cheap, which is always nice. So this is a quick video about kind of tips and tricks that I discovered along the way machining HDPE. I haven't done plastic before, so this was a learning experience, but it was pretty fun as you'll see. Machining plastic makes you feel like Superman. Counterintuitively, there's actually not a lot of information about machining plastics, at least for smaller machines. If you skim over practical machinists, there's a ton of information, but it's all for the big boy machines, and the advice is basically go as fast as your machine can possibly go. That advice still holds pretty true for the smaller machines, as I discovered, uh, but there are a few kind of gotchas. If you haven't checked it out yet, I highly recommend taking a look at Winston's video from Carbide3D about machining HDPE. This was the jumping off point that I used to start my feeds and speeds and then tweaked from there. I'm not going to lay out exact feeds and speeds for all the different operations because the point of this video is not really the mold that I'm making, but to give general guidance. And so HEP seems to like between 400 and 600 surface feet per minute. At least that's kind of what I divined. I'm not entirely sure those numbers are accurate. HSM advisor seems to think it's higher up at around 1100. I found various things on the internet saying it was closer to 450. So I don't know. I just compromised and did somewhere in the range from 400 to 600, depending on how I was feeling. As far as chip load, I was aiming between 4 and 10 thou per tooth. The goal here is that you want to take a pretty hefty bite out of the material. Since it's a plastic, it will deflect away from the cutter pretty easily. And so if you have too small of a chip load, then the material will just deflect from the cutter and you'll get rubbing, which increases heat. And obviously heat is bad with a plastic because you'll just start melting. So don't be afraid to take a big chip load. I think my five to 10 thou was actually pretty conservative. Here I'm cutting at 50 inches per minute and about 13,000 RPM, if I remember correctly. Later I bumped this up to 70 inches per minute with a higher chip load. And I suspect I could have gone much, much higher than that for the roughing pass. You'll notice that I'm cutting both directions on this adaptive, both climb and conventional, just to speed up the adaptive a little bit. I suspect I probably could have just done a simple 2D pocket and knocked out this roughing even quicker. I'm using pure air blast with no coolant, although for later runs of the same toolpaths, I turned on the coolant. Uh, I didn't really see a noticeable difference. Some folks online said it gave a better service finish because it essentially cooled the plastic and kept it from melting, but I didn't really have melting issues anyway, so I think coolant is probably optional and just air blast is fine. I used one and two flute end mills. The advice for aluminum essentially applies to plastic. You want a large gullet to quickly and easily clear chips. If chips don't get cleared, they pack in and start to melt similar to aluminum welding, but not quite as bad because it doesn't ruin the end mill. You'll still push through the plastic. You'll just get really terrible surface finish and melted plastic on the sidewalls. So not catastrophic, but not ideal. Carbide versus high-speed steel really doesn't matter from what I found. You run them at the same feeds and speeds. There's no noticeable wear on high-speed steel or carbide, so the normal considerations don't really apply here. A potential advantage to high-speed steel is that they supposedly have a sharper edge, which is better for cutting plastic chips. I saw some disagreement on this online, saying that modern micrograin carbide has just as sharp of an edge, so the jury might still be out on that one. I didn't really notice a difference. I used a mix of high speed and carbide, although there are some deflection issues with high speed that we'll talk about later. Let's take a second to talk about entering the workpiece. As you saw, I just plunged into the start of this cut and got this big bird's nest that I had to blow off manually. Plunging into HDPE is totally acceptable. You can plunge without any real concerns because the material is so soft. In fact, plunging quicker is better because it forms a larger chip that tends to evacuate rather than a stringy chip that wraps around the end mill in a bird's nest. I did eventually switch all my toolpaths over to a helical though, and this is just for process reliability considerations. I 
wanted to run a bunch of these molds and walk away from the machine once the toolpaths were vetted. And I found that helical ramps just don't build up bird's nests around the end mills because it presumably just cuts a really tiny little chip. And so it's slower. It's totally not necessary from a material property perspective, but it kept me from having to babysit the machine and blow off bird's nests. I used a 1 8 inch ball end mill for the arms of the headband. And I used the ball end mill because the whole mold has a slight three degree draft angle to help demold in. The speed that I ended up running this at was 133 inches per minute, which just kind of blew my mind. You really have to just see it crushing through a slot at 133 inches per minute to really realize how different plastic is from metal. An unanticipated aspect of this high feed rate is that the smoothness of the toolpath really matters to get a good and clean cut. It's not really apparent on the video, but in person you could see the machine kind of stuttering as it went around this curve at such high speeds. I didn't use smoothing in Fusion for the original toolpath, which meant that the curve was composed of many, many small line segments. And at the high feed, you could actually see the machine kind of stuttering as it went from line segment to line segment. And once you factored in the small step down to handle the three degree taper, you ended up with a really giant program. For later molds, I turned on smoothing and cut the program size down by like 90% and the arcs were much smoother and the machine sounded a lot happier. For all the roughing, I had cut climb or climb and conventional both ways. But a tip I picked up from Winston was to cut conventional on the finish passes. Uh, apparently, HTPE burrs or frays on the final finishing pass if you cut climb. So conventional just gives it a, a little nicer finish. The finishing pass was a 2D contour with a very small step down at 10 thou. And again, 133 inches per minute. I left myself about 10 thou from the roughing pass, which... I decided was not enough, and so in later runs I bumped that up to 15 or 20 thou, because again you need a certain amount of material to actually take a chip, otherwise it just deflects out of the way. And this is doubly so when you're running conventional, because it has a tendency to increase tool pressure and rub before it takes a chip. The tool I'm using here is a high speed end mill, although I later switched this to a stub carbide end mill. And the reason for that is that I noticed an edge or a lip along the perimeter at the very top of each mold segment. Now I'm not really sure what caused this, but I have some guesses. I think the lip is actually where the cut should be, and then the rest of the cut as it tapers towards the bottom is actually not the correct geometry. I think this was a combination of factors. First, this was a high-speed steel end mill, so it is more liable to deflection, especially smaller end mills. When you combine that with cutting conventionally, which adds more tool pressure due to the rubbing at the beginning of the cut, I think the cut was essentially deflecting inwards more than it should have. Leaving a relatively small amount of material to cut, only 10 thou probably made this worse because it wasn't grabbing a good chip and instead just kind of rubbing along the internal edge and being deflected inwards towards the center of the cavity. The second mold that I ran, I used the stub carbide end mill with a larger stock to leave on the roughing pass. And you can see that the lip is considerably smaller. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure what the cause of this was, but it seemed that a combination of increasing the amount of stock to cut and using a stiffer tool seemed to make the situation better. Well, I think that's all I have for you today. Hopefully this was helpful. If you are interested in cutting HDPE or more generally plastic anytime in the future, I have to say it was really fun and very low stress cutting this plastic. And I think I'm looking forward to doing some more plastic projects in the future. Thanks for watching.